Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we're going to be doing a quick vid on input validation. We're going to also be using some manual uh, manipulation, if you will, and we're also going to be using something called Tamper Data, which is a plugin for uh, Firefox. I don't know if they have one for Chrome or not, but I know they definitely have one for Firefox. Okay, so basically uh, input validation is, is what we kind of touched upon on uh, you know injections and we're working with SQL injections and uh, cross-site scripting and all that good stuff. Um, so basically there used to be a huge problem uh, even on sites like Amazon where um, crafty users if you will such as you and I uh, could change the price of items before they're actually put into a shopping cart by simply manipulating the URL parameters. Right, so they didn't hard code anything in, they kind of posted and hung out everything all in the URL. And I'm going to show you a few examples of that today that I found while browsing around the internet and uh, doing some crafty Google dorking, and we'll touch on that as well. So basically, um, I went ahead and I was just surfing around on Google, like I said, and I came across this weird old school looking site. And, um, you know, I said, let me play around with the site and see what I can find in terms of, you know, what's going on with it. It just kind of looks old and maybe it's got some outdated stuff on it. So I went ahead, uh, it looks like it's got a shopping cart and you can buy some items on here. And so I just went to um, buy scarves. And of course, I tried my fancy old uh, SQL injection on it and uh, it didn't really work, right? So they got that going for them. But there is another security flaw on this website and I'll show you. So I'm going to go ahead, click buy scarves, and I'm just going to select this very first one here at the top. Uh, it says the price is $19.95. Well, I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to pay 20 bucks for this fancy looking zebra scarf here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add this to the cart. And you can see now it's put here in the cart for uh, $19.95 plus $6 shipping. And we don't want to pay that 20 bucks, right? So looking in the URL here, um, you can kind of see what I was talking about. They kind of hang it all out to dry, if you will. And you can see that there's a value in here that's uh, called price. And of course, it says 1995. And then, of course, there's product. And it looks like there's some HTML characters in there for whatever reason. So we want to go ahead and change the price here. Let's say we only want to pay, oh, I don't know, $1 for this uh, fancy looking scarf. So once we make that change, we just want to go ahead and hit enter, to refresh the page, so it adds it to uh, adds that item to the cart again. And now you can see we have the same exact listing, but uh, we added one in here for a dollar. So we're going to go ahead and just zero out this quantity here to get rid of the original line item. And now we are paying a dollar plus six dollars shipping, and the total comes to seven dollars right down here. There was no parameter, unfortunately, to change the shipping um, inside that URL. And so, whatever, we just paid $7 for a scarf and saved ourselves a ton of money. Well, that's great, but not for them. Um, sometimes, you know, if you've got a uh, clerk there that's running this online store and processing orders or whatever, uh, they may come across that and say, hey, a dollar for this thing, that doesn't look right. But Nevertheless, you see where I'm going with that. If it does pass uh, by them and they don't notice it, guess what? You just got a scarf for a dollar. So um, I want to just briefly touch on using Google Dorks for a minute. Now, I've been asked a lot of questions about it, especially since our uh, SQL injection uh, video that we did and all that good stuff, uh, XSS videos and everything else. Um, it's pretty simple. There's quite a few. You can look them up on Google themselves or whatever search engine you're using. Just look up Google Dorks list and you'll find a ton of them. Uh, we showed you the one in the uh, SQL injection videos of the in uh, URL parameters to search for things that are in the URL. Well, today we're going to use something for in text. So let's say we found a shopping cart. Uh, we scroll down to the very bottom of the page and it says here, shopping cart by Mal's e-commerce. So we want to go ahead and find every single site that uh, Google has indexed with that in the text. So the Google dork we'll be using is in text. And I'll show you how that's done. So basically you just fire up Google and of course Google dorks will only work inside of Google. So keep that in mind. It will not work in Bing or any other search engines that you're using. So simply type in I N T E X T and you can see I've done this before colon and then no space quote and then the 
uh, powered by Vo uh, V Bulletin or powered by WordPress. In this, in, in our case here, shopping cart by Mal's e-commerce. Close it up with a quote and go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see I've already tested a few of these websites here, and I'm going to show you the differences here. I did notice that in my testing, uh, this e-commerce provider, creator, whatever uh, developer has updated their shopping cart. Uh, to not allow you to change the parameters physically um, by manipulating the URL anymore, but I found a way around that, and I'll show you exactly how that works, and that's where Tampa da uh, Tamper data comes into play. Okay, so basically, um, this last one here I know is still using the old version of the uh, shopping cart. Unfortunately, the shopping cart uh, tags at the bottom of the page didn't give us a version number. I just figured this out through trial and uh, trial and error. So basically this is another store here. We're just going to go into their store. Looks like some sort of fancy beads. I'll just pick this top one here. And I'll pick the top one here. And you can see again it says price $4. I'm going to go ahead and click on order. And you can see I already did this here. Um, but uh, basically when we go back and click order, we'll see we got them in there for $4. Now of course, um, you got to look for the price uh, parameter up in this URL and that looks like it's going to be right here at four dollars well we don't want to pay four dollars that's ridiculous for some uh, fancy little um, bedazzled whatever that these things are here well, anyway we just go ahead and do the same thing refresh and you can see it came in as a dollar I'll go ahead and zero these ones out here and refresh the page and you can see that we're only paying a dollar now for these fancy bedazzled beads or whatever they are. So, um, again, that's how it works. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, but I want to show you how their updated version is still vulnerable to the same attack, just not the same way. So we're going to go ahead and use Tamper Data. Let me just back all the way out of here. So let's go ahead and go up to this... Uh, Sanda Baby Designs deal and click on their link and you can see here they got uh, some sort of baby supplies I guess alright so what we do here is we have a plugin uh, as I mentioned mentioned for Tampa tamper data sorry I'm extremely tired uh, and then I'm just gonna go to my tools menu and start up tamper data and of course I'm gonna click start tamper now, the beautiful thing like this is it kind of works like um, the Z attack proxy in Kali Linux. Um, same idea, it's just basically between your interactions and that website. Uh, so anything that you're pressing, clicking, it's going to come up and ask you if you want to tamper with it or if you just want to forward it forward and hit submit. So I'll show you how that works in just a minute. So we have it running here. We got it started up. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually not going to start this just yet made a mistake here because I just don't want to have a ton of information to look through. So I'm going to go ahead and look through some of their baby blankets here, I guess, and I guess I'll pick this happy dot blanket here, 50 to $56. Good God, that's a lot of money for a baby blanket. So we are definitely not paying any of that, right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and now start our Tampa data, tamper data. Man, I really just can't say it. All right, I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to start tamper and I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Now it's going to ask me if I want to tamper, submit, or abort the request. Well, of course, since I'm pretty sure by clicking on what we just clicked on, it's going to send this to a cart. So I want to go ahead and click tamper. And you can see here it gives us some of our parameters that it's going to post. And it looks like there's nothing in there for us here. It gives us some cookie information and we're just going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to ask us if we want to tamper again. We can just hit OK. And so now it looks like we're here at where we're actually going to place our order. So now, of course, you can put in a monogram or a thread color or any of this fancy doodad. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click order. And now I'm definitely going to click tamper. And look at that. We have a whole other pane window here to the right of the actual parameters that it's posting to the shopping cart. Right. So we're at that stage where it's actually making your order it's processing your order so if we look down uh, the parameter name list here we can see product and catalog and price well if we went to change the price manually we're not going to be able to change it as I said but 
you know what maybe it's a maybe it's a good idea to show you how to do that first here let's just go ahead and uh, abort request let's just close this all out stop tamper clear close I want to show you what I'm actually talking about here uh, as to why you can't manually change it so let's go ahead and click order and then you can see up here it doesn't say anything about a price it just says discount PR equals zero comma and then the $50 price which is of course the $50 price down here now if I try to change this price here to 51 let's say and refresh it doesn't actually change the value down here like it did in the other older version of this same shopping cart software so here's where we come into Tampa data I'm actually gonna just delete this and go back okay so we're at our page here where we're gonna go ahead and place our order so we would go ahead and start up tamper data and hit start at this point now we're gonna go ahead and click order and we're gonna click tamper when it comes up and again looking through our post parameter names we're gonna find our price and let's say that uh, fifty dollars for a baby blanket way too much sorry not paying it I only want to pay ten so we go ahead and choose that uh, number to ten uh, if there was a tax rate in here it looks like you could probably change that as well and let's go ahead and click OK and then submit to actually forward it over to the website and let's take a look at our shopping cart now hey wouldn't you know it's ten bucks and uh, it did charge us some tax but I guess that tax rate is hard-coded into the website um, because it, the, all the options in tamper data was zero for that so basically uh, we can go ahead and go to payments here I'm just gonna go ahead and submit this. I'm not gonna tamper with it anymore. We've already made our changes. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my uh, shipping. Click continue and just click submit if you wanna just keep forwarding it. And of course you can see now we're at the actual shopping cart where we would fill out our name uh, and information here. And of course the price is still $10. Supposedly a secure payment, isn't it? Funnily enough, we were able to change the price. Um, all that good stuff came through uh, I guess at that point uh, when we chose our shipping rate if we were to tamper that as well we could probably change the shipping rate I, I really didn't go into it um, so basically that's how it works guys so you know there's maybe two methods to doing different things depending you know maybe three or four or five ten it really it depends on what your results you're getting are so in our first case we were able to manually manipulate that in the URL and change our price to one dollar we could have changed it to zero dollars it really doesn't matter um, they updated their sharpening cart software uh, and basically took away that availability for us to do that um, but we were able to use another tool tamper data to actually get in there and change that price anyway so that's just a quick tutorial here about input validation using a couple of different tools um, checking for errors and you know making some price adjustments now I'm not gonna say that this is gonna work on every single shopping cart site um, there's a lot of better ones out there uh, I don't know if it works against you know any kind of shopping carts that plug into like a PayPal payment page I haven't actually tried it yet um, maybe that's something I will try uh, at some point soon and let you guys know about that um, updates uh, again you know if you guys have been following around uh, following us on Facebook and uh, learn that um, you know checking out the blog and you know the the forums uh, and things like that uh, you would see that the reason why I haven't made a video in quite some time or really put out any kind of content is I've been very busy uh, making some personal and professional life changes here uh, so now that most of that set in stone um, I could hopefully get back to uh, cranking out some new fresh videos and content so uh, for those of you that stuck by I do appreciate it trust me uh, without you guys it, this project wouldn't make any sense to do uh, I would just be, be babbling by myself here uh, so uh, in other news I want to stay on track with the web pen test series I want to try to kind of make it structured like we did with the uh, introduction to network security and pen testing auditing series that we did um, I'm still trying to figure out the best structure as I'm learning the more advanced techniques of this stuff uh, the best structure to actually show you guys the beginner steps so we can step into some advanced stuff perhaps down the line um, the other thing worth mentioning is I know that um, I haven't really been answering your comments on YouTube the reason for that is ever since the Google Plus integration nightmare it's really you know become kind of cumbersome and ridiculous to try to answer comments and questions and replies and all that stuff on the video so what I suggest is if you have questions for me um, 
or if you you know want some more information check out the website uh, it's linked in the description learnnetsec.com check out the community section sign up for a free account it's free of course uh, you can also check us out on Facebook uh, where there's links in the description for that as well um, check us out there and on our website and like I said I'll do my best to try to respond to everybody at once uh, and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video thanks again stay tuned